As Christians around the world reflect on the coming Easter season, a new movie is being released in time for Holy Week. It's called Resurrection and chronicles the immediate aftermath of Jesus' crucifixion. It premieres on the new streaming platform Discovery Plus on March 27th. Joining me now to discuss their new film are the producers and our friends Roma Downey and Mark Burnett. Thank you both for being here. Great to see you guys. Now, Mark, this story of the resurrection of Jesus is so well known, but in this film, you focus primarily on the transformation of the apostles immediately following Christ's resurrection. Why did you choose that focus on the apostles? Well, good question, Raymond. It's, first of all, we made sure it's biblically correct. And as we learn from the Gospels, what happened around the crucifixion and immediately after in the Acts of the Apostles. But what isn't really there is what they maybe were feeling, the fear they were experiencing, the terror of seeing their leader, our Lord, murdered brutally and the believing that they were next and what it was like to be those 12 in the upper room terrified that they were going to be next the shame that was peter's for denying our lord three times and not even being at the cross of the crucifixion and going on then all that terror and that being feeling destroyed and then of course jesus resurrects and everything starts to get better and they, they then go to Galilee, spend time with him, and of course, return. And eventually we get Pentecost and the special effects these days we can do around movies to really show the fire of Pentecost yeah. and what really happened. So it really is biblically accurate, adding the emotional connection that the audience needs. We're hoping, Raymond, that people who've never been to church or people who've fallen away and don't really know their Bible that well mm -hmm. could watch this movie and be so intrigued to seek more information and turn to church and the Bible to learn more. Yeah. Roma, this really is a resurrection in many ways here. Due to the pandemic, filming was impossible. You couldn't shoot. So you turned to your archive for this movie. Where did the source material come for resurrection? Yeah, we did, Raymond. Remember, we did the same thing from the Bible series, our very successful right. series that aired on the History Channel. We were able to go back into that and pull out the narrative of Jesus' life and mm -hmm. tell his story. And we we made the beautiful film, Son of God. Yeah. Well, we've done the same here with our AD, The Bible Continues story. And we've gone in, we went in when the pandemic began. Mark and I said, you know, next Easter, we really will need this story of hope mm. now more than ever. And there's no greater story of hope than the resurrection of Jesus. So we worked with our editors to craft and shape this 90 minute experience. And it mm. plays out like a fantastic thriller, really, yeah. because first century Jerusalem was a very dangerous place to be with that mm. cruel, oppressive regime of the Romans under Pontius Pilate. And um, it plays out, you know, in this sort of beautiful way. But I think, Raymond, in many ways, this last year have been so challenging for all of us. Mm. Uh, and a year ago, almost exactly, we were all forced into lockdown. And I think that there's a, a tremendous symbolism that's parallel with with this story, mm. that we were locked down, if you will, in the tombs of our own homes, mm. isolated and cut off from each other, not able to see the people that we love. And we're so ready to step out into the light. We're so ready yeah. for a resurrection in our own lives, aren't we? You know, yeah, a resurrection right. in our jobs and our businesses and our mm. economy mm. and our schools. And um, so we feel that the movie is the perfect movie for such a time as this. Yeah. And it's our hope and our prayer that families will be able to gather together from the comfort and safety of their own homes and watch this Easter story unfold mm -hmm. together on Discovery Plus. I, I want to show the audience a little clip from the movie. Uh, Mark referenced this earlier. This is Jesus speaking with Peter after the resurrection. Watch. When you told me I would deny you three times, I thought it impossible. I thought you don't know me at all. You knew me better than I know myself. Peter, do you love me? You know I love you. Feed my lambs. Do you truly love me? 
You know I do. Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? I love you. Then follow me. Mm. Mark, you all consulted with religious leaders from across the board to ensure the accuracy of the film. How did their input change what you ultimately put on the screen here? You know, um, in the case of this, there wasn't much that had to be really, really changed. We just have to be more sensitive mm -hmm. um, from different denominations looking at things slightly differently. But in, in this, the Bible was much more difficult, Raymond, much more difficult, because it was such a mm -hmm. thousands of years of documentation in the Old and New Testaments. Here we're dealing with one specific short period. Mm -hmm. And so we're, it was much easier to deal. And as we added things like, clearly that conversation wasn't exactly perfectly as per uh, in the Gospels, but it was giving the feeling of, mm -hmm. of, of how Peter felt. You know, at this point, they're in Galilee, as you know, and Peter is already feeling a bit better. Mm -hmm. There's a scene where before um, Jesus resurrects, right after the crucifixion, where Peter returns, he's face to face with uh, the mother of Jesus, the Blessed Mother, uh, John and Mary Magdalene, who were at the cross. Right. And his shame and his horror at himself for two things, mm. denying Jesus three times, and then, of course, not even being at the cross. Yeah. You know, And he can't even believe it himself. But the reason for that, I feel, was to take him to his lowest low and show him he was still loved and mm. still mm. forgiven, which is a message to all of us yeah. that we all make mistakes. And in, this may have been one of the largest mistakes in the history of the world, to have not to deny Jesus after that three years and being yeah. the rock, the leader. But even he was forgiven. And as you see at the end of the movie, mm. we go on to what happened to these disciples and how the 12 of them grew into, after Pentecost, a few thousand. And today, over two billion of us mm. follow Jesus. It's an amazing story. It and is. this is so easy to follow. Someone who's never even heard of Jesus could watch this movie and really start to feel what it means to be a Christian mm -hmm. and will seek more information. Yeah, and to put it in a historical context, and it's gripping. I mean, it's, there, there, there are cliffhangers here, and it really moves. And as you said, there's special effects around the edges. I mean, it's really well done. Roma, uh, Argentinian actor Juan Pablo de Pache, who plays Jesus in the film, you chose to fly his mother in for the filming of the crucifixion scene. She's there at the foot of the cross as well as in, in the film. What effect did having her present for that scene have on Juan Pablo and the rest of the crew? Oh, I think it was just such a comfort to him. Um, you know, this was the third crucifixion scene that Mark and I have produced uh, uh, with, and, and it never gets easier. Mm. It's even to create, recreate a reenactment of the scene is profoundly moving mm. for everybody involved, but mostly for the actor who has to play Jesus, he has to strip down to a loincloth, he has to get up on a cross, and he has to pretend to be the savior of the world. And, and it's always very challenging. It's a daunting task to ask of an act, actor. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we just thought it would give uh, Juan um, a special comfort to know that his own mother was there. And his own mother ac actually is a religious um, art painter. Mm. And so I think it was particularly meaningful for her to be yeah. there. But you know, I mean, the scene that moves me every time is the poignancy of, of our Blessed Mother being there. Yeah. And, you know, we know the strength and courage that was required from her to stand at the foot of the cross and to watch her son be so brutally mm -hmm. murdered. And I feel certain that she remained there with courage and strength to be the face of love. So when he looked down, he would see the face of, of, of love looking up at mm -hmm. him. And in some ways, uh, we hope that Juan's mother being there would offer him that, you know, a similar yeah. comfort. Uh, a connection. Uh, yeah, a connection he's so vulnerable him. when yeah. he was so vulnerable up there. But it's a, a beautiful sequence. He does a, he does a great job. 
uh, as do all the actors. Listen, it takes a village, Raymond, to make a movie. And, uh, you know, and we had wonderful artisans and craftspeople and designers mm. and, you know, the list goes on and on wow. to create this first century world because we wanted to have an authentic world that we mm -hmm. could draw back the curtain and invite you, the audience, to come in to experience this drama play out in it. Yeah. Mark, you've worked to bring uh, several now scriptural epics to the screen, uh, the, the, the Bible miniseries, A.D., uh, and now this film, Son of God, while at the same time producing The Voice and Survivor, how do these projects affect your other works? Do they have an impact? Is there bleed over, if you will? Um, well, a couple of ways to answer that. First of all, when we started doing the Bible series, you know, our careers were pretty much at an all-time high, and people gave us two pieces of advice. One was, don't work as man and wife on this together. It's too mm. stressful. It could break your marriage up. Mm. You won't survive. And we not only survive, we're actually thriving. So that's the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. Secondly, mm. they said, you know, on top of that, your careers will diminish. Hollywood doesn't like this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You guys have such big careers. And the opposite happened. We made these biblical epics and our other careers rose. Again, I believe that's the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. Um, people used to sort of laugh at us a little bit, like you got these are these crazy Christians in Hollywood, the, no the noisiest Christians in all of Hollywood. But actually now, they don't even say that anymore. They're so used to us. They're like, oh, okay. Oh, resurrection. Mark and Roma. Biblical epic. Oh, that makes sense. So mm -hmm. now it's become the norm that we do it. <laughs> <laughs> we see you've carved out your own genre and brand here. Uh, of course you would. What, what, what do you hope resonates with the audience after seeing this film, Roma? Well, particularly this, it's, it's an hour and a half. It moves so quickly. I mean, we watched it with the family and people were, you know, everybody was focused and it really does carry you right through. What do you want people to take away? I think so. Raymond, uh, thank you. Raymond, I, I remember being a young girl in Ireland and uh, very excited gathering around the TV at Easter time to watch the the content that was available back then, like Jesus of Nazareth or The Greatest Story Ever Told. Mm -hmm. And there's some of my fondest memories of the Easter holiday. And so we really hope that maybe an annual tradition begins here mm -hmm. as families gather together. This is a great resource for family. It's a great entry point into conversations with your kids about the, the life of Jesus and about the Easter story. I mean, you could remove the nativity from the Bible and, uh, and the New Testament would still hold up. But if you removed the resurrection from the New Testament, you know, it would be a completely different story. It's a very right. important story. It's the center stone of our faith. So we really hope that people are, are reminded of mm -hmm. the love of Christ that they're reminded of the, you know, the great miracle of the resurrection to take away our fear at a time when maybe we're still full, full of fear because of the pandemic. Right. And as Mark referenced, the end of the film, we remind the audience that we take them from the first century where there were just a few hundred mm -hmm. thousand of these early believers into the 21st century, where there's now over 2.2 billion. Mm. And I would think that that's just a very comforting reminder that yeah. we belong to each other and that we belong to the, a bigger family in Christ. Yeah, I agree. Well, uh, a blessed Holy Week and Easter to both of you and to your family. Thank you all for being here. And I hope we see each other in person before long. Yeah, Raymond, I was going to say, it seems yeah. like we used to see you quite often and then the pandemic, we haven't seen you all. So we're really, really hoping that as the vaccines roll out and we hope to see you soon because we always like spending time together. You bet. Well, thank you so much, Mark. And Resurrection, produced by Roma Downey and Mark Burnett, premieres on Discovery Plus March 27th. See it, watch it with your family and friends. Uh, it'll make your holiday richer. Mark and Roma, thank you for being here. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you all.